Santa Herbie, so I'm Sudie Landry, and today I have an aunt that lives in Lafayette, but she works in New Iberia, and this is her first book that you see on the background, Tangled Up in You. I have Alicia Benson here today, and she's going to share with us how this came about being a book, but first, welcome to the show. Alicia, tell me, okay, I understand that you are a teacher. You would like to share with us how you ended up in Lafayette, Louisiana? Um, it's kind of a long story. Um, I've always had a fascination with Louisiana, and I've always been, wa I've always wanted to come and visit, and after I came to visit, I decided I wanted to stay, and that was in 2001. And well then, Cajun people call you and myself transplants, mm -hmm. and I know for a fact, once you're a transplant, it's harder for someone to criticize the Cajuns in any way because we take it very serious oh, yeah. that this is our hometown. Mm -hmm. Well, you came in 2001. Mm -hmm. I have been here since uh, 19, actually 1967. So I've been here for a while and I've learned a lot. But I was so impressed not only with the Cajun culture of being so friendly, mm -hmm. but the food was good and I'll never be that little bitty girl I used <laughs> to be. But who cares? The most important thing is the family unit. Mm -hmm. We not only have gifted cooks here in Cajun country, but I'm finding out, Alicia, that we have so much more talent here. For example, authors like you. Mm -hmm. I started off on Acadiana Open Channel, which is where we sit today. I came in with the idea to showcase myself and all the good things that I've been part of. But as I began to showcase the music, I also started hearing stories. Mm -hmm. And as I saw it came together that this show was going to be about people, not just me, mm -hmm. stories, music, authors, and more. Look at you. You have the background in teaching. So where did you teach and how long are you still teaching? I am still teaching. I'm at New Iberia Senior High right now. I'm in special ed. Okay. I love it. Um, my background is actually English. I used to teach English okay. before I did special ed. Um, I did three years of teaching in Oklahoma before I moved here, and I've been here since then. So, okay, what year did you move here in 2001? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're originally from Oklahoma. Yes. Well, that's kind of mm -hmm. close to where I was kind of raised up in the Arkansas corner of Oklahoma. Okay. And, uh, but it's a totally different world here, isn't it? Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, yeah, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. That's why people that get here want to come back or they want to live or they want to retire. Okay, mm -hmm. moving on. So you are a teacher in New Iberia. Yes. Okay, well, in between the teaching, when did you start maybe writing down things that you did not know at the time may become a book? When did you start writing this Tangled Up in You? How did that come about? It actually, um, my friend Steve, he brought me a, an article about a writer's conference in Homa, Louisiana, the uh, Gambalaya Writers Fest okay, yeah. Festival. Mm -hmm. And I had been playing around with the idea, and I decided to enter the first, it's your first 1,500 words of the novel. And that's all I had. So I sent that in, and I got third place. So I thought, maybe I have something here. So I started to flesh out the story and started working on writing a full-length novel out of that. Well, I'm here to tell you that I'm the president of the Writers Guild of Acadiana. Mm -hmm. And not everybody gets that success that fast. And so for you to have even won in place for the first try, mm -hmm. wow, that was awesome. So that was in a contest that mm -hmm. accepted you, and you entered, and you won. Mm -hmm. So you began to write this story. That was not a finished story when no. you entered it, was it? Was it was just the first 1,500 words, wow. and then I went from, from there. And how many words is it now? About 55,000 around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that is awesome. So uh, how, do you, how do you go about planning a book? Have you got more than one book going on? Don't go and start talking yet. How do you come about organizing to write a book? Give us a little background of what it took to get this book published, from uh, writing it to editing it and all of that. I learned through the writing process of it that it's not about the writing the first draft. It's about rewriting the consecutive drafts after that <laughs> and learning to sequence things and how things you know, flow together. It was real learning process. Well, at least you had a head start, Alicia, because you had that education background that mm -hmm. already helped you properly use sentences the mm -hmm. way they should, and quotations, and paragraphs, and so you had a head start. There's so many good stories out there. Some people cannot mm -hmm. start their story because they think that they have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Just write down the main facts. 
and then learn to edit and organize. And mm -hmm. sooner or later, you get it together. But as a teacher in that area, did you locate a local editor to go over your work, or did you ask friends? Friends. My friend Steve does most of my editing. Okay. Um, he's got a background in journalism, so okay. that helps a lot with that. <laughs> wow, you just, everything just kind of fell into yes, place for really you. Yes, it really did. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, when did you start writing Tangled Up in You, and when uh, was it published? I started actually writing it in 2014. Okay. And it got published in 2017, so it was about a three-year process to get Well, that meanwhile, mm -hmm. Alicia, in trying to get this background up there the way I wanted it, we discovered you have two other books, so when yep. did you write those books? Um, and what was the name of the second book? Okay, the second book is called Catch and Release, and I actually kind of started playing around with that idea around eight or nine years ago. So okay. I had some notes written down from that, so it was already mostly written by the time this one got published, and I edited it to make it fit with the story. So that one was kind of already done as well, and then Running on Empty, I started writing whenever I would take breaks from Tangled Up in You. Because <laughs> I would get my frustrated. goodness, you were yeah. multitasking, huh? Yeah. Well, not everybody can do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had written stories since 1995, and I had shelved them, and I could write five stories a week, but mine were short stories. Mm -hmm. What is your genre? Mine's inspirational, and so short stories. So I could write mm -hmm. five in a week. Yeah. Okay, but with you, it, the genre is what? Fiction. Fiction. Mm -hmm. Okay. And would you classify it as a novel? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us don't understand what is a novel. What is a novel? It's anything more than 40,000 words. That sure would help if I could remember that, <laughs> even that. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot when I uh, started attending the Writers Guild of Katie Anna. Mm -hmm. I went in there with a motive to gather guests like you to bring on this show. Mm -hmm. Needless did I really expect to become six months later the secretary. <laughs> but you know, when people see you write notes, they think, Boy, she knows what she's doing, right? Mm -hmm. I just want to write and find out and go back over the notes. Well, then after a year, then they decided they would like for me to be president. And here I was following in the big, huge footsteps of people like you that had all this education, and all I had was a gift to gab. <laughs> so they seemed to think it was okay. But through, since 2010, Alicia, I have had so many people like you come on this show that's been hardworking people. Mm -hmm from different backgrounds of work of anywhere from movie actresses, teaching on the side, uh, you name it, so many different careers, geologists, uh, ex-priests, I mean, you name it. But everybody worked, everybody had a story, and it's amazing the genre mm -hmm. that they chose to write in or ended up writing was not necessarily in the field of their livelihood. But they had stories to tell, and it's so yeah. unique. So. With you, and with that said, I was asking you earlier, and I'm going to share with Katie Anna. Usually, I meet people in person, and then I ask for their cards, and then I invite them to be on the show, or at least let them know I'm going to be emailing. Mm -hmm. But with Alicia, somebody posted something on Facebook, and then I liked what she was talking about, this tangled up in you. I love what she was sharing about her successful book signings. So I applied to be a friend, but sent you a note so you would accept the friend mm -hmm. uh, being on Facebook. And so you are one of the few that have actually got off of Facebook. But now that I have contacted you, it's given me a new resource into other people. So that's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Resourcing. You never have too much. Right. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Getting over that code, people, from last week, but we're going to make it. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about uh, something I read here that I thought was beautiful and like to pretty well quote. Everyone has dreams, but it takes more than a wish to make them come true. Now, that right there comes out of your book, Tangled Up in You. Right. Mm -hmm. But that speaks volumes to me because that's what this show's about, mm -hmm. helping other people and their dreams come true. With the platform here, we want to share your story. We want to let the people in Acadiana know that not only do we have good food cooking, but we got great stories and great people with all yes. these talents that range anywhere from school teachers mm -hmm. to even children that are doing art and writing and all that. So I thought that was beautiful. Everyone has dreams, but it takes more than a wish to come true. Now, with that being said, and it's inside of Tangled Up in You, would you like to kind of give us a brief uh, 
sample of what this book is about? Um, it's basically about a woman who is in a situation that's not very good. Her husband is an alcoholic and she's working all these hours to try to make ends meet and he's spending the money and she finally decides that she has enough. So she gets in her car and goes back home to Bonchance, Louisiana, which is where she grew up. And she reconnects with her old friends and her old boyfriend and she actually decides to finally open the catering company that she's always wanted to open up. So she's able to uh, get through that bad season of her life and, and start off in a new life, mm -hmm. a new career. I find just that little bit that I know of your book, which I have not purchased it yet, uh, is enough to encourage people to follow their dreams. Definitely. Don't give up. You can be, I tell my kids ever since they were small, you be whatever you want to be. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be what someone thinks you should be or tells you you're going to be or tells you that you can't be. It's all up to you. We can be whatever we want to be. We just have to work for it. Exactly. It's not given. Okay, and I, I say that because a lot of people write true stories um, and they use the true stories to spin off into fiction fact that get in fiction books and stories. But this kind of book, with very little that I know about, it's already encouraging to me, to a couple of people I have in mind, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, one wants to cook. One wants her own catering business, literally. That's awesome. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I know that, you know, as long as you got somebody encouraging you, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you can strive for that end award, that end trophy. Who encouraged you to write? Continue to the end. Who was there for you? For me? Oh. Yeah. I have, I'm, I've been lucky. You name it all. Um, <laughs> Steve, Connie, um, my friend Mark, and people that started reading the story while I was writing it, and they said, Alicia, you have to finish this. So uh, I've been very lucky to have so many people support me. Well, I understand that you have done and had some very successful book signings. Yes. One mm -hmm. was in a beauty shop. Let's plug that lady. Kudos <laughs> to you. Because mm -hmm. it's hard to get a beauty hairdresser convinced of anything. I know. <laughs> I was one. And I had to believe in the product before I would let it be in my shop. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, let's thank that lady. Well, I name. have two. Um, I okay. have Sherry over at Ultimate Look. And then there's Ashley over at Salon, Salon de Vogue. In, uh, and what towns are they in? They're both in uh, Lafayette. Okay, so that was an opportunity that was offered to you, and you were able to place your books in there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, have you been able to get your books placed in uh, other outlets like Barnes & Noble or anything like that at this time? I went to Barnes & Noble, um, <coughs> and they are available over there. You just have to go order them. It's very hard. Yes. It's very hard to get in the doors of Barnes & Noble, but mm -hmm. don't give up. Anybody's got anything, sooner or later, it'll come across. Yeah. Barnes & Noble, of course, is one of our local bookstores, and uh, it's nice. Mm -hmm. uh, who published the book for you? Limitless. Limitless mm -hmm. Publishing, which is on the, your notes, okay. Mm -hmm. So if anybody would be interested in finding out what your book's about, and even your other two books, then they would probably email you at the email that we have right. displayed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, again, you work in New Iberia, but you live in Lafayette. Uh-huh. Okay, I have a couple of questions I want to ask you this normal, <laughs> they say to ask publishers. Okay. What was your reason for writing this book? What was the real reason? Do you um, know? I, I just always wanted to write a book. Okay, well, that's know? good enough reason. Yeah, <laughs> so I started with the story and I just kept going with it. If you had to uh, describe your book, uh, what would be the central message in your book? What is your book mainly saying? Basically, is it Telling, is it encouraging somebody? Is it uh, giving someone hope? That's really, each mm -hmm. person has a different answer. Really, mine's about friends and family. Okay, well, that, that's important. Mm -hmm. Friends and that family. should come first. Mm -hmm. That should come first. Well, as we, I was going to ask you if you have plans to write a sequel mm -hmm. of this story. Yes. But you've written two other books. So, yes. mm -hmm. in your other books, are they totally different stories? Or they no, they're up? all. Um, they're really centered around a group of friends that grew up together, and I call them the Boonies. Okay. So they're all about different characters in that little Okay, group so of friends. Uh, all of your books are available, and if anyone's interested, then they can just email you and find right. out the details. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where was your last book signing about? When well, was it was in one? Oklahoma. Yes, I was went in to Oklahoma? Oklahoma for Christmas, and I did a signing there. Well, wow, that's great. Yeah. Well, um, I can say that my last book signing was December. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I'd, in my situation, I write inspirational stories, true stories, true happenings, all mine. Mm -hmm. 
uh, faith, many stories of faith, from angelic beings to those ugly critters too, okay? Mm -hmm. But by faith I walk, and so therefore my stories are like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't go and talk about my stuff just anywhere. My material is more to go in, and uh, someone asked me that same question when I asked you that. I, I basically am a speaker, and I, my background would be to go in in, uh, in a church if they wanted to share, you know, some inspirational things or encouragement. That would be me. Yeah. And one day someone asked me, I ain't never published my books. I mean, basically I wrote the stories. I wrote them, wrote them. They've been stored since 1995. And then someone one day asked me a question. I said, oh, you know what? Go here and check out this, and there's a title, and maybe it'll answer your question. Eventually it turned out it was a publisher. Oh, wow. And he asked if he could publish my stories. So my, pu my stories got published about a year and a half ago. Now, I'm not one to go do book signings. I like to get up and talk about my stuff. If you're mm -hmm. interested, just like a hairdresser. If you want to buy <laughs> my products, you buy it. I'm not going to sit there and sell it to you. It's got to work. Yeah. And so with that said, uh, I found out real fast I don't like book signings. Really? But because mm -hmm. of my genre, my mm -hmm. genre is not to talk about it because people are sometimes scared to come up to the table. I go, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. You won't be afraid. I'll tell you about the books and stuff like that. So I realized at the last book signing I told my friend, the publisher, I said, hey, I appreciate what you're doing. You plug these books all the time. You're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to do any more book signings. I just believe I should be in a different area. You. I love book signings. So you look, see, yeah, see, everybody has them. their own preference. Mm -hmm. You know, in my case, book signings are okay, but I like to be within the church, which is where my stories would be. Right. So that I thought I'd just kind of throw in there. Not everybody goes to the same places. Right. I mean, this is really far-fetched, what I'm going to say, for some reason. But it's kind of like each person knows what will work for them. You know what you're comfortable with. And just because somebody else wants to do it a certain way, it can really hinder you instead of making, hey, if you want to, people would come to my table, you know what i talk about? Since they were really kind of scared about publishing my book, mm -hmm. I'd talk about AOC. I'd talk about what we do here. I'd yeah. talk about different things. That was where my thing was. So after I did that at the last uh, book signing, everybody was crowding around the table. You were sworn. <laughs> Basically, I was selling books, but I was telling a story. I'm a storyteller yeah. that just happens to write good stories. So by saying that, each person is an individual. So with you, you love going wherever you're invited. Oh, yes. yes. So where, what would be the ultimate place that you would love to be invited to go and share your books? I know there's a bunch, mm -hmm. but is there one particular outlet? Um, I can't think of one particular outlet. I would love to go to New Orleans and do a book signing because a lot of my stories have a scene or two or something that happens in New Orleans, and it's one of my favorite towns. Awesome. So, mm -hmm. You Have you checked out the Baton Rouge Book Festival? Because if you have not, mm -hmm. you need to Google it, and you need to find out because that is an opportunity of a lifetime for, for authors, and you meet a lot of people anywhere from movie producers on up. Wow. I have to tell you mm -hmm. that when we do shows like this, I turn around and I put it on YouTube, mm -hmm. and from there we put it on Facebook. Yeah. And I am free to say this now, but I had an author that they saw the video, and they Warner Brothers contacted me. No way. That's so awesome. You just never know who's mm -hmm. scouting those videos. Then another time, so anyway, that was up to them. Once, once she, that was my goal. I didn't need to know what was going on. Right. Warner Brothers contacted me. I got permission to give her information. They contacted her. Whatever took place, did it took place. Now, in the future, uh, in the past also, there was a cooking show we'd done. Mm -hmm. And Food Network videos. You two saw the show on uh, YouTube and mm -hmm. came down to check out the chef that we were videoing. That is cool. You never uh -huh. know. Now, with the Katiana Open Channel, hello, with the Katiana Open Channel, you just never know who's watching. Right. And, and we are, are a nonprofit, so. With that said, uh, a lot of people don't get Cox Cable. Mm -hmm. If you don't have it, you won't be able to see the show. So that's where it impressed upon me to create where people could get on Facebook. Yes. They can watch YouTube and other people watching too. So mm -hmm. you never know who is going to be uh, checking you out or who you're talking to or sitting next to. Now, they're giving me signals that we're almost to the end of the show. Again, Kenneth, how much time do we have left? About four minutes? Okay. Four. 
three minutes left. Okay. <laughs> well, then, in that case, we just so we, we just touched. You see how time passes so fast? I get, it went by really fast. Okay. Well, the most important thing is that Lafayette, you see the book up there, Tangled Up in You? She has two other books, and I want you to name the second book. What is the name? Catch and Release is a novella, and then Running on Empty is available now. Okay. So if you're interested in information, finding out where she's at, or better yet, if you'd like to do a book signing, then you can shoot her an email, and she'll be glad to accommodate you. Definitely. Meanwhile, um, this show is created to share people's dreams. This show is an opportunity of Acadian Open Channel. If you have dreams, as she stated in this book, they can come true, but you have to work. You have to know what you want and not give up on that dream. So with that said, you've been watching Louisiana Heartbeats, and we air every Monday night at 9 p.m. on Cox Cable. But if you're not able to see us on Cox Cable, then be sure to watch YouTube, because we do place it there and also on Facebook. So. With the closing coming up real soon, we're going to mm -hmm. have any running credits. Would you like to share anything that you have on your heart as far as encouraging authors and things like that? Oh, just, just keep writing. <laughs> keep writing and mm -hmm. I always say happy writing to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I am a published author. I am a television host. I am nothing without you or anyone else that comes on the show. So I love showcasing authors. I love showcasing children. I love booking people who want to tell their stories. If you have a merchandise that you are doing, like painting and stuff like that, it's the story. Right. It's the stories inside of the stories. So, but today we were showcasing an author, and Alicia Vincent, out of Lafayette, who has now released three books of hers, and the one on the screen is her first release, Tangled Up in You. And since the, the rolling credits are not up there yet, I'm going to read a little bit that you didn't say. Okay. The character Emily Bro's abusive alcoholic husband keeps drinking away her dreams. <coughs> Excuse me. When he cleans out their bank account once too often, Emily packs her meager belongings and returns to her hometown, as Alicia mentioned earlier. Surrounded by their love and support of a group of old friends, as she mentioned, known as the Boonies, <laughs> she's determined to change her life and open her own catering company. This book, just with those few lines, encourages me that this is going to be a success story for somebody that possibly could read this book and be encouraged in whatever your dreams are to make them come true. Of course, things don't always turn out the way we want them to, but usually they turn out for the best. Mm -hmm. And that was my addition to that that's not in the book. It turns out starting over isn't easy. We all know that. But starting over is worth it sometimes, isn't Definitely. it? Definitely. I know. I have been through a lot of rocky roads and up and down valleys, and we are who we want to be. You want to be a teacher? Mm -hmm. You became a teacher. You now want to write good stories? You're writing those good stories. I want to tell everybody's stories, and so that's why I have the television show, Louisiana Heartbeats. And my director in there is Kenneth Franklin, and he gives me signals whenever I need to do something. And so how much time do we have left so I can let uh, Alicia? Okay, we have less than a minute left. So would you like to share with us your family members? Um, my mom and my dad, my sister, my, and my brother was killed in Iraq a few years ago. Oh. So that's, that's my family. Sorry to hear mm -hmm. that. So, uh, okay, you've written one book. You're writing, you have two other books published. Are you working on something else? Oh, yes. I've got to finish this series. So I've started writing Carly's story. So wait a minute. Who's Carly? Carly is one of the characters in, in, in Tangled Up in You and, and Catch and Release. Okay, okay. Her story All right. is the last one. Okay, we don't see any rolling credits on the <laughs> screen, so that's why I keep talking. <laughs> and so from there, are we doing okay over there? Okay. He says that we're at the end of the show. Okay. Okay, oh. so but keep on talking because I want people to know that you're doing spinoffs of Tangled Up in You. Yes, they're all the Florida Leaf series, and Carly has always been a fan favorite, so she definitely gets her own book. Okay, so mm -hmm. could you tell us a little bit about who Carly is Carly. in the first book? In, in Tangled Up in You? Yes. yes. She's she's one of the friends. She's one of Emily's friends. Uh, she's um, Noah's younger sister. Noah is one of the main characters in the book, and she's one of the bartenders.
Well, that's good. So we get to follow them through another journey. Yes. Again, thank you, Katie Anna, for watching us. We had uh, we had Alicia Vincent today, and she has now three releases. The first one is Tangled Up in You, but two others that follow, and she's working on the fourth. Tune in. It might just be you. We're still facing the next one.